Okay, we are back and yeah, here's the box of the Leica SL. It's not that spectacular, but maybe it's interesting for you guys. Um, obviously, I've been using the camera for a few months now and, and I bought it second hand, so the box is not new. Um, but still, I think it could be interesting. Uh, so before we start, I think we need a little bit more light. I mean, the window light is nice, but maybe some kind of edge light here. So let's bring in some lights. Oh yeah, that's better. Okay, let's open it. So here you pull and then you do this and we have some papers. So we have a signature from someone from Leica uh, assuring that it is uh, the camera's working, everything is fine. Um, although I'm the second owner, so it's pretty much useless to me. Um, but it's nice that they do that. Uh, what is this? Your benefits as a Leica customer. Okay. I actually haven't uh, looked at this. Dear customer, congratulations on the purchase of your new Leica. Life must be nice from now on. <laughs> okay, I will put this on the side. So let's remove this and ta-da! Here is the camera. Um, obviously it's already unpacked. Usually uh, it's wrapped in this here. Um, but I think it looks cooler like that. There's the SL. So we have the camera here. We have, I think this is a cable. Yeah, this is probably for charging the battery or it could be a power cable. Um, battery. These guys are very expensive. Uh, I don't know what this is. Maybe a CD. I've never actually checked it. Okay, and here's a top view. Nicely packaged. Yeah, it's a big box, but the camera's also big, so... I mean, it's a little bit extra extravagant, we would say in Germany. <laughs> battery charger. This is how a Leica battery charger looks like. I don't remember what was in here originally. I just put in the strap. So this is the strap that comes with the Leica SL. I actually really like this strap. It's a typical standard heavy camera strap, but I like how, damn it. I like how uh, thin it is and soft. Then we have a lens cleaner. Uh, I've never opened this up before. It's taped up, so maybe the previous owner used it already. Oh, it's hot. So. Must be nice. Uh, should I open this? This is just a cable, so maybe I just leave it inside. I'm curious to know what this here is. What? <laughs> That's it? <laughs> what is this for? So a little backstory. When I bought this camera on eBay, uh, it was sealed. It was packed in, in wrapping paper, but it came with this um, it came with this mount cap here that is not made for the SL and as you can see it doesn't fit and this was how I first came into contact with my SL I was like what what is this I don't want the sensor to be exposed but see this cap here is um, it's too small so the previous owner probably lost the, the mount cap and because of that I'm going to quickly uh, put on my little M mount adapter so I bought the SL second hand, obviously. I don't know how long the previous owner used it, but uh, when it first arrived, it looked like brand new. There were no scratches, nothing, like no signs of uh, use. Uh, since then, I put on a lens protector. It still looks very good, but it has a few smudges from my fingers. But it's crazy how clean it looks. It's still, you know, no scratches here on the bottom. Usually when you buy the second hand, you find uh, scratches here on the bottom. Um, but this one, yeah, it's it's really like having a new SL. Um, I also taped this area up here. It said Leica in big fat white letters. Um, it looks nice. I like the lettering, but for me, if I'm out on the street, uh, I don't want my camera to scream Leica. Um, I still have the red dot. <laughs> and first I also taped up the red dot but it looked a little bit too intimidating. Um, yeah, so I'm using my Minolta lenses from my CLE on the SL. 
but I also got this little beautiful lens. This is the Voigtlander 35 F2 Ultron uh, from the vintage line. So the story is I never really planned to get this particular lens. I saw it, I think it was uh, Steve Huff. He was using the SL with this lens and I thought it looked very sexy and I didn't get this lens because it looks cool. Um, I got it because I was curious and researched it and at the same time uh, on eBay suddenly this lens popped up second hand for a very good price and for a week or so I was debating do I really need it. The thing is what I really like is 35mm on full frame. What I don't like is 35mm uh, equivalent on APS-C because it just looks flat. But 35 on full frame gives, gives you this nice 3D look. And I was interested in this lens because of um, the rendering. It has a very vintage character, like the out of focus background. But at the same time, it is very sharp. Sharp like a modern lens. And I read some reviews that this one is um, actually sharper or at least the same sharpness as the Leica uh, Summicron 35. A lot of people don't like this lens because of this focusing tab. And yeah, I can understand why, but I kind of like it. And I'm going to show you why I like it uh, in a second. I will talk a little bit about how I use DSL and my first impressions, what I like, what I don't like so far. I've already talked about the reasons why I went for the SL in the first place and why I didn't get an M body. So check out my Bulgaria vlog if you haven't already. Let me explain to you first how I use the camera because then it makes more sense to talk about the other stuff. So for me this is the digital version of my Minolta CLE. But at the same time, it's also kind of like a 5D. You know, I treat it as my professional photo body uh, when I want to shoot weddings, which I might do this year, it's not sure yet. Uh, or if I want to take portraits, landscape, uh, documentary projects, um, this will be my main camera. And I chose to go for M lenses mainly because I like the many focus experience. And I want to get better at judging my distance for zone focusing. And so far, this camera made me learn faster than shooting film. Because on film, when you do the zone focusing technique, which is you look at the um, distance scale here on the lens. And for me, it's uh, here in Europe, we have the metric system. So we use meters. So for example, I see a person two or three meters in front of me. Uh, I check my distance scale, put my focus to two or three meters and then just take the shot and hope for the best. I go to the photo lab first, let my film develop, come back home, scan it for an hour because I take my time and then I see if I was in focus or not, right? So there's no immediate feedback. I always have to wait for it. Go out there and put in the work. And that's simple as that. Like this stuff is so important. So you have to practice this for months and months and months. But if I want to get good at zone focusing and manual focusing and be fast, um, this is kind of a shortcut for me. Go out there and put in the work. Although I didn't get this camera to practice that, but it is a nice bonus. So I have my camera down here. And then because this focusing knob is so big, it's easy to find. Uh, so I use my two fingers to, to grab it and I hold it and I walk around the city and see hmm, maybe I take a photo from this scene or maybe this and then I uh, set my focus distance maybe two meters maybe three um, of course after a while I get used to it and know where exactly I have to go without even looking um, but the idea is that I look at my camera take my time 
Okay, I think two meters, or maybe a little bit more than two meters, okay. And the cool thing about this Voidlander Ultron 35 is that it not only has the focusing knob, you can also focus um, by uh, holding the lens here, twisting the focusing ring. And most M lenses, they don't have any anything to grab onto, only the focusing tab. So you can't really do this. Um, so again, I'm focusing on two meters and maybe two and a half. And then before I raise my camera to my eye, I grab the lens on the side here. And then I have it on my eye. And then I do the micro adjustments if I need to. Because then I can quickly see through focus peaking and just because the view, this viewfinder is very nice, I can quickly adjust. But most of the time I'm almost dead on right with the focus. Let me demonstrate it maybe. I hope I get it right. So my cat is sleeping over there and I know it's between one and a half meters and two meters. And my guess is it's one and a half, maybe 1.6. So let me turn on the camera and I will not change the focus for now just to see if I was right and oh, focus. So uh, what I just did was uh, exposure compensation. It was too bright. Uh, let me check. Yeah, it's pretty much in focus. I think I, yeah, I think I nailed it here. As you see, I got really good at guessing the distance. I'm also at F2, which makes it ultra hard to nail focus and I will show you some photos I took in Berlin on the street using that technique and uh, almost all of the times it works it just works I don't need to worry about focusing and I really enjoyed so far um, focusing manu manually at f2 and getting that nice 3d look um, I really like the bokeh from this lens it has a little bit of a vintage character but it is sharp like a modern lens uh, maybe I can take a photo of this camera here so to show you. So I will show it here. So this is how it looks like. Downsides of this lens is that it vignettes heavily at f2. But there is a profile in Lightroom that eliminates that. Yeah. And I know that a lot of you guys want to see a review of this lens. So I'm definitely going to do that at one point. Um, okay, back to the SL and how I work it on the street. So focusing like I mentioned, uh, pre-focusing to a distance and then quickly adjusting. Um, but most of the time, I don't need to adjust it. I should auto ISO. And ISO you change by using this button here. Uh, if I hold it, I go into my ISO settings. Uh, it's usually on auto. And for shutter speed, I use this back dial here. And this front dial, uh, I use to adjust the exposure compensation. So as you can see here, when I turn it, a little plus or minus symbol pops up. And when it's set on minus, it means I'm underexposing. And while looking through the viewfinder, this is a very fast way to adjust um, the exposure. It's very nice. ISO performance is surprisingly good. It's definitely, I would say, in the realm of X100F or GR3, but it might be a little bit better. It's, it's hard to say. When there's noise, it's not distracting so much. And I have some low light uh, photos that I can show you where you can definitely see the noise, but it's not, it's not an ugly noise, you know? I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't look like film, obviously, but it, it, it isn't distracting. I actually don't mind shooting 6400 for example this camera has no ibis the sl2 has ibis which would be very awesome to have but because this camera is very heavy it's it's harder to get sh a camera shake for example if you use a ricoh gr it's very small i think it makes sense to have the ibis in the gr3 because it's so small and it's easy to shake the camera but on the sl because it's very heavy um I can take photos maybe, yeah, around 30th of a second is my max. I'm not going below that. Uh, usually I'm at around 60 and low light. Um, yeah, it's no problem. And in terms of uh, body weight and size, I have my 5D here, 5D Classic. And as you can see, they are quite similar. They are almost the same size. Um, so for me, it does feel like using a 5D and I remember using that in Italy, for example, for 10 days. 
and it just starts to feel like a normal camera. And then when you switch back to a small mirrorless camera, you realize how big this is, right? Ergonomically, it's strange because it doesn't have any... It feels like it's not made for human hands because it's, it's so like boxy. I don't know how to describe it. But because the grip is so deep, it does, it does feel nice. Uh, another thing I noticed when I was photographing protests uh, using the SL, for example, when I used my Minolta Roka 28 uh, on the SL, that's where I realized that uh, when I'm out shooting fast, I have to treat this camera like shooting film almost, because there's no time to zoom in and focus slowly. So I had to always guess my distances right and all I have to do is just raise my camera and take the photo or sometimes use the LCD live view. But there was really no time fiddling with the camera and for that I think this is amazing. It's, it's probably how you would use an M10 or M240 except you're having a rangefinder a viewfinder. Let's talk a little bit about the rangefinder and EVF uh, topic. Optical viewfinders are definitely better for street photography because you see the world how it really is and it's just, it's just different looking at a screen and looking through glass. Because when you look through glass, you focus on what's happening. When you look through an EVF, you focus on the colors, the exposure, uh, the film simulation, composition. I mean, you also uh, concentrate on composition using an optical viewfinder but the only thing you have to focus on is what's happening in front of you and um, ideally I would love to use an M10 I'm com if I'm completely honest with you guys if I could afford an M10 I would probably I would probably go for the M10 but one of the reasons why I didn't went for a digital M is that I kind of I think it makes more sense to use uh, a film M body just because they hold the value much better. I don't know, I was looking at the M240 and it's so big and fat and I heard, I read some people saying it's, it's you know, it's not really like shooting analog, like shooting film. Uh, and I feel like I will always lust off after the film M experience. So I'm not going to get any digital M body in the near future, I might get a film MP. <laughs> oh man, that, why is that MP so expensive? No, so that's why I decided to go for the SL because I decided to shoot digital uh, as well as film, but not going completely 100% film. I might get to that point. Honestly, I think it would make my life much easier, but, but at the same time, I have to produce so much content for YouTube and take photos for other people so digital is still valuable or needed in, in my world at least but I want that same experience you know of slowing down being my own being the master of my camera you know so focusing myself and all that stuff so in that case the DSL is pretty nice I really like how the camera feels it's everything is so it's just perfect. It just feels so premium. I mean, it better better does, right? Because it's an expensive camera uh, or was. But every dial and button, they have such good feedback. I never had a camera where everything was like exactly the right amount of uh, resistance or it just feels the clickiness. I don't know if that is a term, the clickiness of a button, but the clickiness is uh, very good. It's just very satisfying. Even the on and off switch, it definitely makes you think less about the money you spent. <laughs> um, yeah, it's nice. Okay, enough positive talk. Let me find some negative aspects of the Leica SL. Um, main thing is probably the weight. It is a little bit heavy and for some people this could be a deal breaker. Personally, I think I can accept it. I got used to it. Although I have to say my, my right wrist is um, it's not the fittest anymore. Uh, sometimes I have a little bit of pain on my wrist, but that comes from editing on my computer using a regular mouse and doing this mo motion. That's not good. 
so I switched to a vertical mouse so now I'm doing more like this and it's much better um, so I have days where my wrist hurts a little bit more but this is something specific to me I have to treat that be a little bit careful but so far I haven't had any pain using this camera even one-handed if I do this a lot yeah maybe my wrist will start to hurt but this is a camera you use with two hands so you should walk around like this another thing I don't really understand why Leica did that is the viewfinder is non-adjustable I mean the brightness of the viewfinder you cannot adjust I think it dynamically adjusts to your environment and I read somewhere that Leica wanted it to look as real as possible and most of the times on mirrorless cameras uh, it's too bright and when I went outside for the first time using the SL I was quite shocked to be honest because I was looking through it and I was like what is this this is too dark I can't see and then I was looking for settings but there were none um, and later I found out that that is totally normal and you can change it it hasn't been that bad that I can see the photo it's just that I wish I could see a little bit more sometimes and I think it's the same with the Q, I'm not sure. Maybe one more minor complaint. So when I turn the camera on, the display turns on and it says Leica SL Type 601 first. And then after a few seconds it goes to the regular uh, display where you can see the shutter speed and ISO. That's okay, but sometimes it takes too much time. I want to change the settings and see it on the display. Although I have to say uh, when you turn the camera on you can immediately look through the viewfinder and take photos so at least the camera is ready fast but I need to always look through the viewfinder to change my settings and I cannot just turn it on and quickly adjust my shutter speed so I always have to raise my camera to do that yeah it's it's a minor annoyance that's basically it I don't have any other complaints uh, so far it has been a very nice experience and all the hype I think the Leica hype is kind of justified once you use a Leica cam I think you know what I mean it's everything just works and it, everything feels right it's it's just nice <laughs> yeah let me know what kind of videos you want to see in the future maybe I'm definitely going to do a Voigtlander 35 Ultron review uh, also comparing it using it on my X-H1 which works uh, very well and looks very nice Next video I'm going to do is probably a shootout between 5D and the 35 lens, SL and the 35 lens, uh, Minolta SLE with this lens, uh, and Ricoh GR 35mm crop mode, and Fuji X-H1 using the 23 F2, which is a 35 equivalent. To do a comparison in terms of colors, I want to compare all the color profiles, not color profiles, the standard colors. I think it will be very interesting to see Fuji colors against Leica, Ricoh, Canon uh, and film Portra 400. Uh, so yeah, I hope to uh, do that soon. Okay, so my camera just died. I think that's a sign. We should end it here. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed my little behind the scenes vlog. Maybe I do this more in the future. Let me know. Um, hope you enjoyed my little Leica SL uh, unboxing, first impression, flex! <laughs> uh, yeah, see you in another video very soon. Stay safe, stay sane. See you next time. Cheers. You have to just go out there and put in the work.